You can go from no energy to holy shit, I have so much energy, like that. Simply because you're using the body the way that the body is made to be used. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the nine ways to naturally have more energy. I'm gonna give you some that are gonna be decently obvious, but I'm gonna give you some tips around how to make them better. And I'm gonna give you some that are just gonna be something you probably never thought of before. So the first one as how to have more energy is to get some sleep. Now you might be like, well, no, sh well, let's dive deeper into sleep. Uh, sleep is obviously extremely important for your energy, but there's a couple hacks that you can definitely have. Number one, your room should be as dark as possible when you sleep. You should figure out how much sleep you need. For me, it's about seven and a half to eight hours. I can sleep for 13 hours straight if nobody wakes me up though. I just can sleep. But if I'd go too long, then I don't feel good. If I go too short, I don't feel good. So I've come to realize that my natural time is about seven and a half to eight hours, which is common with people, right? Make sure your room is really dark. Usually it helps if you're colder as well. And uh, one of the things that, that helps with sleep is making sure that you keep a very consistent time. You go to bed and you wake up at the exact same times every single night, every single morning during the week and also during the weekend. So it's very important to keep your circadian cycles exactly the same. If you wanna research more about circadian cycles and how to help with them, that is definitely one way to do it. Now, one thing that helps with that as well, everybody seems to wanna to wake up earlier. It's very simple to wake up earlier. Do you wanna know how to do it? You just force yourself to wake up, let's say it's five o'clock. And you're like, but I'm a night owl. I went to bed at midnight. All you gotta do is force yourself to wake up at five o'clock. You're gonna be more tired that night and you're naturally gonna start to fall asleep. So if you wake up at five o'clock and five o'clock and five o'clock, no matter what, your body will change its circadian cycle and start to make you go to bed earlier. A lot of people think that they're night owls. Nobody's really a night owl. Very, very few, like one out of a hundred people out of studies they've done and found that, that people are actually night owls. What happens is it's just the problem is that people are around too many screens, too many screens, they are keeping themselves up. If you were to go, okay, when the sun sets, I'm gonna read a book, try to keep yourself awake if that's what you did every single night. You're gonna fall asleep. First thing is sleep. When you wake up, one way that's going to help you when you break your sleep, if you've heard me talk about this before in my podcast, is to walk outside. You go and you look at the blue in the sky because the blue turns off, it turns, we have your receptors in your eyes that tell your brain to stop making melatonin and your brain stops making melatonin, which is the thing that makes you fall asleep so that you wake up earlier. Second thing that you wanna do to have more energy, which goes with number one, is to drink some caffeine if that's something that you're into. Now, the secret is to not drink caffeine within an hour of waking up because that's when your cortisol levels are really high. It's best to let your cortisol levels drop and then have caffeine about an hour to two hours after you wake up. So for those of you guys that have a lot of caffeine, uh, this is a secret. Wait about an hour. Along with caffeine is to stop drinking caffeine at about noon if you really want to have good sleep and have more energy. If you want to have a whole lot of energy, you can stop drinking caffeine completely. And eventually after about a month, your body will start creating its own energy. So caffeine is super important in this sense. Also, what type of caffeine you have. It's crazy. I didn't know there's so many different types of ways you can get caffeine. So there's coffee, which you could use, but I'm starting to drink less and less coffee over the past year and a half. And I'm starting to go more towards tea. Tea I drink the most is called yerba mate. People always send me messages saying, Rob, what is that tea that you talk about? It's called yerba mate, Y-E-R-B-A-M-A-T-E. -E. Yerba mate, instead of dehydrating you like coffee does, it actually hydrates you and it's got a lot more nutrients inside of it as well. It's also got a lot of other stuff. Uh, when I was talking with uh, Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is uh, the neurobiologist out of Stanford, he told me he drinks because there's a lot of extra things that are benefits for your brain of actually taking your mate versus coffee. So tip number two, obviously is caffeine. Tip number three, take some B12 if you want to. Now I'm not a doctor in any sort of way, so don't listen to anything that I say, but I take B12 sometimes throughout the day to get something natural without having this massive spike of caffeine and then a drop after. So B12 is something that definitely helps as well. It's super simple. Tip number four, Stop drinking so much alcohol. Actually, if you really wanna help yourself out, stop drinking alcohol, period, if it's something that you could do. I very rarely drink alcohol, but this is something super interesting that happened over the past week. Last week was my girlfriend's birthday. We went out a couple times and I didn't even get drunk at all. I just had a couple glasses of wine. And I wear this thing on my wrist when I go to sleep. It's called, or during the day, mostly throughout the entire day, and then also when I sleep, it's called a whoop. And it literally tracks your body the entire day. And it tracks your recovery as well. Something really crazy happened. My recovery from having two glasses of wine completely plummeted, even though I got more sleep. Three of the nights we went out and we had a couple glasses of wine, like her friends were in town and then we went to San Antonio where she's from. And then I had two glasses of wine there. My recovery during sleep got destroyed 
from two glasses of wine. Alcohol stays in your system for up to 80 hours. That's over three days it will affect you. And so I always knew this, but I was like, I'm gonna have a couple glasses of wine, no big deal. So on the days that I did not, the four nights that I did not drink the two glasses of, of wine, my recovery was around 90 to 94%, which means that I woke up and I had energy. I woke up and I felt good. I woke up and I immediately was like, cool, I can work out, no big deal. What happened was, then I look at my whoop and I saw that every day that I drank, the, the, the night that I drank, my sleep was around a 31 to 35%, which means that I didn't feel anywhere near 100% those days. So if you want to have more energy, don't go home and drink a beer. Don't go home and have a glass of wine. For some of you guys are like, but hold on, glasses of wines are actually good for your heart. Well, just so you know, you can go back and listen to my interview that I did with Dr. David Sinclair, who is the head of longevity at Harvard. And he actually says that, uh, I think it's res resveterol, I think is what it's called, the antioxidant that they found that's inside of wine, red wine, that they did a whole article and said, oh my gosh, this is so good for you. They've actually found it's very small amounts and it doesn't really do anything for you. That was just people over promoting that wine is good for you. It's not bad, bad, bad for you if you're gonna drink just one glass of wine, but what you have to realize is this. The thing about alcohol is that it will help you fall asleep easier, but it will make your sleep worse. And the reason why is because it changes your respiratory rate and it also changes your heart rate. The other thing that was interesting when I checked my recovery, every single night that I drank, my normal resting heart rate is about 50 to 55 beats per minute when I'm sleeping. It was literally up to 60 to 70 beats per minute just when I was sleeping after having alcohol, which means my heart rate went up 20 to 30% while I was sleeping. It's not a good thing to have your heart rate be up while you're sleeping. So. If you want to have more energy, stop having a glass of alcohol, stop, stop having a glass of wine, stop having a drink when you come home, stop having beer. It is destroying your sleep as well. Number five, put some music in your house. I'm really big. If you ever come over to my house, I'm really big on always playing music. There's always energy and vibration going through my house at all points in time. For me, and I don't know about you guys, like I have favorite songs that just feel like they give me energy. And so one of the hacks that I find with a lot of people that make it super simple is just start putting on music that you like. Don't even put just background music. Put on music that you like throughout your house, while you're driving, while you're at work, wherever you can listen to music. If you have favorite songs, start putting those favorite songs on. Have the vibrations go through your house. We're vibratory beings. We're constantly vibrating at all points in time. That's just what we do. If you look at us, we look like we're solid beings, but really what we are is we're just a vibrating piece of mass with 70 trillion cells that are constantly moving and vibrating as well. And so when you have energy and movement and music going through a room, your body's gonna feel it. Your body's gonna hear it. You're gonna start singing along with it. You're gonna start moving your body a little bit more. So a thing that I recommend is to put music on whenever you can have music on, especially if you can put on your favorite music. Tip number six, Try something called breath work. There are many, many different types of breath work, but this is something that we do with our team every single morning. We have a team meeting every single morning, all, of, all hands on, on, on deck, everybody that's on our team comes in and we do breath work every single morning, guaranteed the very first thing that we do. There's multiple different types of breath work you can do. I'll give you three of them that I recommend. We've done all three of them with my team. They enjoy all of them at different times. One of them is called breath of fire. Breath of fire is where you breathe in and breathe out of your nose as fast as you can for as long as you can. And when you don't think you can do it anymore, you just keep doing it. I like to put on music, of course, like I said, and I'll do Breath of Fire. So it's literally. And I'll do it. Sometimes you get some snot flying out of your nose. No big deal. That's just part of the process. That will literally start to invigorate your body. That's Breath of Fire. Another one that, that we do is called Wim Hof. So Wim Hof, but we also do something a little bit separate. Another thing that I learned from Wim Hof, so it's 30 deep breaths in. But then on the 30th breath, you ready? Here's the secret. You breathe in as much as you possibly can. Hold at the top and then force yourself to do as many push-ups as you possibly can before breathing again. This is just something that I do. This is not a recommendation. I don't need you guys passing out and then saying, oh my God, I heard this guy talk about this thing. This is what I do. If you want to try it, you can try it. What I have found, and here's what's crazy, is if I want to just do push-ups right now, I can do about 40 push-ups in a row. Here's what's crazy. If I want to do the breathing exercise and then do my push-ups, I can get about 60, sometimes even more, it, without ever breathing again. And the reason why is because I'm over oxygenating my body, which is what your body needs. And also your muscles need a lot of oxygen. So I'm over oxygenating my body. 
and I'm doing these push-ups. I'm doing it to music and I'm pumping them out. And I have literally a song that we listen to every single morning. It's called Strobe by Dead Mouse. We put it on, we just crank it out and we just do the push-up. We do the breathing and then we do the push-ups. Every single time, that's the very first way that I start my morning before I ever have any coffee, any of that stuff. And I can literally feel my body light up with energy and I feel completely different. If I'm ever feeling drained throughout the day, I do one of these as well. And the third one I'm gonna tell you, I don't know what they're called, I just call them skis. That's what I call them because it literally looks like, so for those of you guys that are watching video, for those of you guys that aren't watching video and listen on the podcast, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. And when you breathe in, your hands go above your head. And when you breathe out, your hands go below, down to your waist. And it's best to stand up and it's And you literally use your entire body as if you're skiing down a mountain and you're putting your, your hands are going up, you're going down. Your hands are going up, going down. When you breathe in, your hands go up. When you breathe out, your, your, your hands go down. Do this for two to three minutes straight with music blaring as well. You can go from no energy to holy shit, I have so much energy like that. Simply because you're using the body the way that the body is made to be used. Super simple. So what was that again? Breath of fire <laughs> or Wim Hof. <sighs> or the skis, all of them are different. I use each of them depending on what I'm doing. Try it out, I promise you, at some point in time, you're gonna get a ton of energy from it. See if it works, see if it works. If you're on your phone, chilling on the couch, scrolling through Instagram, you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta get up and do this thing, but I don't really feel like doing this thing. Force your body to do breath of fire or to do the, the push-ups with a breath hold or to do the skis. Put on some music and I guarantee you it'll just rush energy into your body. Tip number seven, get outside. Take your shoes off, put your feet in the ground and go outside in the sun. For me, every single morning, the very first thing that I do because we have a, a puppy, he likes to pee all over the place. So I got to get him outside as soon as we wake up in the morning. First thing I do is I put some shorts on. I keep my, my shirt off and I walk outside barefoot and I keep my feet in the grass as long as I possibly can and get as much sun on my body as I possibly can. And I, like I told you, I look up at the sky, the blue in the sky, and I try to get all of the reasons why I should be awake for my body to go, oh yeah, this is the time when Rob should be awake. The sun is now coming up. He's outside, his feet are on the grass. He's getting sun on his skin. He's looking at the blue inside. So that means that the sky is, you know, obviously the, the sun is up. We should stop making melatonin. I'm trying to give my body all of the reasons why I'm supposed to be up right now. Get some sun on your skin. Also with all of the stuff that's been happening with viruses and everything, vitamin D, which is what you get from the sun, is one of the things that kills the viruses the quickest. According to everybody is the people that have a lot of trouble with it tend to, tend to have vitamin D deficiencies. And most people have vitamin D deficiencies. Get outside in the sun more, get as much of your skin to be able to uh, much sun to be able on your skin as possible and I guarantee it to help you. Number eight, exercise in the morning. It is a fact that the more that you exercise, your body will start to create more energy. You know, I look at my, one of my friends, my friend Amy, when she lived here, she doesn't live here anymore. When she lived here in Austin, she was doing like, God, she was doing like five, four to five cycling classes every single day. And everyone was like, how does she have so much freaking energy? She has so much energy, not because she was just blessed with energy. She, she, must, she has so much energy because she has literally, for years, told her body, this is what we do, this is what we do, this is what we do. And so when she doesn't go and do four cycling classes and she has a day off, of course she's got so much energy. Of course she can keep going. Of course she wants to party until late night because her body knows it needs to create lots of energy. If you've been in a cycle of not working out, not forcing your body to move, your body's learned that you can make it relearn and make it start to create more energy. So work out in the morning, or at least even if it's not in the morning, just work out at some point in time and force your body to learn it needs to create more energy. Your body is an amazing adaptive piece of machinery. Force it to adapt the way that you want it to adapt. Last but not least is to drink more water and preferably drink spring water like this, if you're looking. Drink spring water, it doesn't have to go through a filter. It's coming straight from the earth. It's also in a plastic, or not in a plastic bottle, in a glass bottle. You can do your own research on why plastic isn't good for you and how plastic raises your estrogen, whether you're male or female. But if it comes from a glass bottle, it usually ends up being a lot better for you as well. If it's spring water, it ends up being a lot better for you as well. But just regardless, just drink more water. It's mind blowing to me how little water people drink considering that your body is 60 to 70% water. One of the things that they found is that most people when they're tired, the very first thing you should check is actually if you're dehydrated, because a lot of times the first thing to go down as soon as you're dehydrated is your energy. Your body runs off of water. If you don't feel like you have energy, maybe you should see if you got enough water. Drink a lot more water and your body will actually start to filter out all the toxins and at the same time, it'll run more efficiently.
Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Uh-oh, I'm about to offend a whole lot of people. Here we go.